Well, last week's May jobs report showed an increase of 390,000 non-farm payrolls added. Our next guest, though, says we might have seen the highest monthly job gain for the remainder of this year. For more, let's welcome Interactive Broker Senior Economist Jose Torres. Jose, thank you for being here. So as we look at the economic trajectory from here, most of the attention, of course, has also been focused on inflation and whether we have seen the worst of it in terms of uh, the inflation growth that we've been seeing. So as you look at those two um, and how they work in tandem, if you will, do you think we've seen inflation peak also? Good morning, Julie, and thanks for having me. Inflation peaking largely depends on geopolitical conflicts, um, Russia and China, China with the supply chain, Russia with commodities. Uh, oil, the outlook for commodities is that they're stubbornly high currently, but the outlook is that they'll continue going higher. Uh, alongside that backdrop, a consumer slowdown is occurring due to fading savings, generationally high inflation, and drops in asset prices. On the corporate side, margin compression is likely due to slowing consumer, stubbornly high and rising commodity costs, and geopolitical risks, like I said earlier. So I think that it's a margin compression story on the corporate side, and we've already seen small business be incredibly weak. And I think that the weakness in small business, as the Fed continues to tighten, that weakness is going to transition into large corporates as well. So I think, um, I think this, that was probably the peak for job gains in 2022. Jose, is high inflation here to stay? Yes, I think that we are in a paradigm shift, Brian. Uh, central banks no longer benefit from cost-effective integrated supply chains. Uh, the global outlook is unfortunately not positive. Now, if the global situation becomes, um, becomes peaceful and China and Russia want to work with the West more, then you know we can have those cost-effective integrated supply chains, and then the commodity complex can um, can work a lot better. So, but right now the outlook is negative for that. So I do think inflation is here to stay. And if you look at the CPI inflation and the federal funds rate, you know it's a big spread there. Uh, we're we're a long way from neutral. Uh, so I do think inflation is here to stay. Who are the companies, the, the sectors that you're watching that are best equipped to continue to navigate the current supply chain crisis? Well, that's tough, um, but I would, I would say for investors, staying defensive, um, healthcare, staples, if they are getting quite pricey as well, but if one mixes that with a derivative overlay, like co covered calls or something like that, that can work in 2022. Uh, but right now, given the global situation, and if you go to small caps, which are domestic, they depend less on global supply chains. You know, you, you could still have some problems there because they're more exposed to tightening. They have less uh, fl financial flexibility than large corporates. So I think overall, it's, it's, a, it's a stock picker's market. Um, Jose, how are you thinking about um, what we heard from some of the retailers over the past month or so, where they are seeing pretty significant inventory builds? And so as you think about inflation from a macro perspective, um, how does that feed into it, it, that we are actually seeing gluts in some areas, right? So what effect is, is that going to have? Well, hard to say. Uh, inven um, what we did see is that higher end retailers did a lot better than, than lower cost re retailers like Target and Walmart. Hard to say, but it's the inventory bill does point to the consumer slowing down. And the consumer slowing down before QT even started and before there's been liquid, larger with liquidity withdrawals from the market. So I think that as we transition into 2022, uh, we're going to have a weaker consumer. Jose, is, is the U.S. consumer in much better, or just much worse uh, just condition than the data would suggest right now? That's uh, tough to say. Tough to say if they're in a worse position than the data suggests. Uh, the data does suggest that they are dipping into their savings. Uh, they're relying more on savings rather than income to fuel consumption. Uh, sentiment is in the tombs. It's in recessionary levels. So if, if is it worse than that? Probably, probably in line.